Welcome everybody, this is SharePoint Balance and Practices webcast and this time we're going to talk about how to do debugging uh, when you're doing SharePoint framework solution development. Um, so if you're doing, for example, client-side solution, client-side web part solution development uh, on top of the SharePoint framework, how can you do debugging uh, within Visual Studio Code or within a browser? Um, and today uh, the primary presenter will be Elio. Before we go to the Elios, uh, my name is Vesa Yuvonen, I'm a senior program manager from the SharePoint point uh, OneDrive engineering, uh, but Ilya will be the main presenter today. So Ilya, uh, will you do the quick intros as well? Hi, I'm Ilya. I'm based in Belgium and I'm a lead trainer at uh, UTU, which is a training facility in Belgium. Yeah, super, super classic SharePoint training uh, company uh, for years already, uh, UTU. You. Anyway, so um, I'll be uh, stepping aside uh, and I'll let Elias actually do the presentation and I'll jump in and ask questions every now and then as needed. But this is a super interesting uh, topic and I think we have a nice configurations and solutions to people to take advantage. But I think that's it. Elio, please take it away. Okay, thank you. So as everything in SharePoint Framework itself is client-side based, you have in my opinion, three options of going away with debugging. So the first option could be that you just start opening your browser and start debugging over there. Now, it's not that uh, nice way of working because you first need to find the right file, start adding your breakpoints and so on. Another op option you can go for is using the debugger statement. If you did some JavaScript development in the past, you will probably know that there is a de debugger statement, which you can use in your code so that you don't have to specify these breakpoints and your browser is immediately going to stop on exactly that line. Now, that's one thing or two things you can do. And the majority will love to just keep debugging their code in their Visual Studio editor. And there's a way to do that. And we are going to show this during this webcast. Yeah, so uh, quickly, first. quickly, Ilya, before you go forward on this one. So obviously, uh, on the Visual Studio Code, uh, we're kind of a maturity of the especially new client-side developers are probably using Visual Studio Code. If you're using whatever alternative editor, uh, many of them actually have the similar capabilities as well. So you're able to uh, essentially kind of start debugging with an F5 uh, in, the, in the tooling as well. But in this video, we'll concentrate on the Visual Studio Code. No doubt. Um, and maybe one note on the on the using of the debugger statement. One thing to remember, please get rid of those debugger statements before you go live. <laughs> <because> <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> might be slightly confusing for the end users. But, but yeah, anyway. maybe you can write a gulp task for that to just check if there are still debugger statements in place. That's, that is a good good uh, good idea actually. That's a great idea. Anyway, yeah, let's continue. So let's quickly go in a quick demo of using that debugger statement. So what I created, I just created a small web art that is going to call the search API in case when I'm online, when I'm using the local workbench, then I'm just going to use a mock. So let's first start up our web art. I'm going to use the integrated terminal of Visual Studio Code. And I'm just going to run gulp serve no browser. With the no browser uh, flag, I'm just specifying that I don't want to see any browser pop up so that I have to go to my browser itself. So it's running. I'm going to open my Chrome window. I'm going to refresh, going to add my web part. And now I see a web part over here. It's not going to show me anything. Why? It's because I have to specify a couple of properties. Now, in case if there is something going on, or if you're writing your web part and you just want to know, oh, what are these properties I'm, I should re be retrieving, you can just create that debugger statement in code. So what I'm going to do right here in my render class, or in my render method, I'm just going to write a debugger once done, I save this file. I go back to my Chrome browser. That's I refresh. Recompile. Yeah. So. Yes, indeed. Of course, I don't see anything right now. It's not triggering that debugger statement. Why? Because I don't run or I have 
my developer tools not yet opened. So first, let me open my developer tools. If you just press F12 on your Windows machine, it will open up this Chrome developer tools or in any other browser. And when you refresh again, it will exactly stop on that debugger statement. So you can press F10 and go on, but you can also check which properties do I have? Okay, right now I only have description. I can continue. I can just say I want to specify the exact keywords I'm looking for. So apply. And if I now check back, I see that I have a keyword set to docx, which is the same as I specified over here. And you can use the debugger statement wherever you want in your code. Pretty easy, just keep, and straightforward. Yeah, just keep in mind, always remove that. Otherwise, it will keep breaking over there. So I just removed it. When I refresh it again, it doesn't stop anymore. So when going to production, just remove it before going to production. So that's the quick and easy way. So there's another way. And the other way is for debugging inside Visual Studio Code itself. When you start using Visual Studio Code and want to start debugging in there, you first need to start using or start installing a debugger for Chrome. At the moment, that's the only one that is supported. Uh, there is a page uh, from the Visual Studio Code team that mentions that Edge is going to be supported, but at the moment, we can only do debugger for, uh, use a debugger for Chrome. So just go to Visual Studio Code, the extension step, look for debugger for Chrome, install it. It's going to ask you to reload the page or reload the window. Once it's reloaded, you can start using it. Now, how do you use it? You have to create that launch.json file. If you ever debugged something in Visual Studio Code, you might have already seen it. That's your debugger file, which is specifying which debugging task you can configure inside Visual Studio Code. Over here on the slide, you already see an example one. So in this case, you're going to create a local host. Oh, sorry for that. You're going to create a local workbench debugger task, which is attaching to Chrome which is a launch request. So it's going to launch Chrome and it's going to open up this URL with a quite interesting thing. The runtime argument is going to specify that it's going to open Chrome with a remote debugging port. What is the remote debugging port? When you open Chrome without a remote debugging port, Visual Studio cannot attach to Chrome to read out all the JavaScript files. So by just specifying the debugging port, Chrome is going to open up with exactly that port opened and Visual Studio is going to attach to that port so it can seize all the JavaScript files that are getting loaded on your page. One thing we have to do is specify all the source paths of Webpack in combination with your root folder in your project. So what is Webpack? Webpack is the bundler that is being used inside SharePoint Framework and is going to bundle all these JavaScript files that are transpiled from TypeScript into one giant bundle, but the source mappings will be in place in your browser. Now, I didn't invent these paths. These paths are coming from your Chrome browser or from Webpack itself. When you open your developer tools, and go to sources, you'll find a Webpack source over there. And we can go in into Chrome itself. When I'm going to open my developer tools again, I should see a Webpack source folder and I can just go in and check where all the files are located. So yes, it's a really long list. It is. Um, <laughs> But that's exactly what is happening and what your files are looking at in the browser compared to what you have in your editor itself. 
Yeah. And this makes make sure that even though you're executing JavaScript in a browser, you can still debug stuff in a TypeScript, which is uh, super great. Exactly. So what I was explaining on the slides, first you have to install the Chrome debugger. So open the extension step. Let's look for debugger for Chrome. When you didn't have installed it yet, it will just show you an install button like this. You click on it. It will install, just reload it. Once it's reloaded, you can open the debugging tab. In my case, I already have one, but if you click on the gear menu, it will open a new launch file and you have to specify the following configuration. This configuration can be found inside the documentation page of how you can debug SharePoint framework solutions. When you just go to debug SharePoint framework solutions, using the hosted workbench, you see the complete configuration file. Yeah. Now, one um, thing. Maybe yeah. just to mention on this one, we, we absolutely are targeting to keep this one up to date so that people can just go here. Even though there would be updates in the future, uh, they can go and copy paste the stuff directly from here. Yeah, and one thing each and everyone has to do is update this SharePoint URL to its own tenants yes. so that you can use it against your own one. So I just copy and paste this into my one. So I have a local host one and I have an hosted against SharePoint. I can choose whatever I want to start using. So for instance, I use the local one and when I press F5 or I just start over here, it's going to start up a Chrome browser with that remote debugging port opened. Yeah. Now, one thing to mention on Windows, if you already opened Chrome, it could be that there is a problem with the uh, remote debugging port. So first, close all these browsers, all even yeah, the background processes from Chrome, and then you can start using that. I had some problems with it on my Windows machine in, in the past. So, so let me just add the web part, same web part again. Type in some keywords so everything is rendering correctly. And now head over to Visual Studio Codes. Let's dive in into, for example, the component. So this is my component file. And over here, I can just tell I want to debug at this exact spot. Go back to my, oh, this is my wrong one and refresh my browser and it should, as, as you can see, it should stop over there. And now you can see, okay, I can see the state, I can see the columns. So it's not retrieving any results yet. So it's still in the loading phase. And when I'm coming back right now, it's still loading. Okay. I did, I did one too much, let me put it over here. <laughs> And okay, now I can see I have results, I can open my results and I can exactly see what I'm expecting and what I'm going to return on my screen. So the same can be done when you are going to work with your SharePoint online site. So if I just switch to hosted workbench, let me stop this one and just press a five. Could be that I have to log in because it's a new browser, of course. Let me just enter my password. And at the debugging web part. So it's loading some PowerPoint files. Let's go back. What's running behind the scenes is a search service I created. And over here, for example, I can see when my data is retrieved, I'm going to call the process result service, which is going to check if there are results and so on. Coming back from search, again, wrong browser, <laughs> refresh. And, and there we go. There we go, indeed. Now I can see I have data that I'm retrieving from search. Oh, it doesn't like it. Okay, now I can 
go to the primary query results, I can see the relevant results. I can see that there are tables, there are rows. Inside the rows, there are a couple of results, and each result had a, has a couple of cells. So you can see which properties you are retrieving from search. Absolutely. So quite nice, and yeah. it gives you the complete debugging steps you can do, like press F10 and so on. So you can see what is going to happen, which things are being executed and so on. True. So great experience. Probably and relatively best. simple to set up as well, because it only requires a few steps and just copy pasting the existing uh, JSON definition and then updating the tenant uh, or the hosted uh, workbench URL. So super easy, but super, super efficient. Indeed. So that's what this, uh, that's what's my thing I want to show you guys. Cool. I think that sums up uh, what we wanted to show indeed. And uh, like uh, you actually showed already, uh, the steps to make this happen uh, is in the devtodofs.com slash SharePoint um, and the documentation over there. Uh, we will put that one in the video notes, uh, absolutely. So you can easily access that information or you can have a look on the steps from the uh, video as well, except that the JSON, the launch JSON file definition is probably just a copy paste from the from that uh, article. But I think that sums up the, the webcast. So uh, any last words from your side, Ilio? Are you using this for uh, every single time you're doing any development? Oops. Uh, yes, I just copy and paste uh, the launch file every time over from another project. And that's the most easiest one, way to debug your code and to check Absolutely. The Absolutely. properties and so on. And, and you might actually, it's debatable. Why, why wouldn't we have this by default actually within the uh, Yeoman uh, template outputs? Uh, but this is Visual Studio Code specific thing. And some of the people are using slightly different uh, deep uh, platforms or slightly different um, editors as well. So doing this manually on top of the Yeoman template is not a massive deal. It only takes like two minutes uh, to complete or even one minute if you, uh, as long as you have the stuff open. So not a massive deal. Uh, but I think that's it. Uh, thank you, Ilya. Uh, super, super valuable stuff uh, and super easy to start with. I think the debugger one, uh, it's super, super easy as well. But no doubt the Visual Studio uh, code integration is the, the experience is, is almost like within the, if you're a classic SharePoint developer, it feels like you're doing a, in quotes, a farm solution development or a server-side development because you can debug directly uh, easily within your IDE. But uh, we'll add the links for all of the resources. Um, and thank you, Ilya, one more time. And we'll come up with a new webcast sooner or later. Thank you. Okay, thank you.